This video was brought to you by a better planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, Stormberg, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We're now in front of the house, and behind me here, you see BYD Auto 3. You know, during 1000 km challenge, I had some overheating issues with it, even when it was cold ish outside around 10 12 degrees Celsius. So, I want to do some experiments to figure out. Um, why is it overheating? Uh, will it do that in Thailand? I have some theories I want to test, but um, first of all, um, i done some charging tests, so the car was at 100%. So I needed to do two things, heat up the battery, but also uh, try to discharge as much as possible. I did this in the afternoon, but you see, I connected the vehicle to a load adapter here, and then there's a freaking long extension cord. And then on this side, uh, we are running a two kilowatt heater. Yeah, trying to heat up the battery. <laughs> and then we're also running a dehumidifier. Yeah, why not? The dehumidifier um, sucks only around 250 watts plus two kilowatts. So yeah, that's roughly 10 amp total. Yeah, what is this? No, this is nice and warm. Okay, so I've been discharging the battery, but also heating up the battery. It was 16 degrees earlier. Now this is better, we are, we are at 26 to 32 degrees Celsius, 67%. Ideally, I want to go even lower and then go even hotter, but I think this, this is good enough. So we were pulling four kilowatt. Oh, so around two or something. Well, if you turn off HVAC now, how much is the vehicle load pulling? A little bit over two kilowatt, right? And you can also see here when vehicle load is active, this screen shows it like this. Yeah, discharge. So I say I pull a 19.7 kilowatt hour on the vehicle to load. And then if I go low here, maximum HVAC. Oh, sorry. Screen is always uh, very bright compared to the camera. But then you'll see that we can pull as much as 5.5 kilowatt total. So it's cool that you can actually use the car's uh, uh, HVAC or the car is on now you see we have uh, USB everything running and you can still use the, the vehicle to load so yeah I'm not sure how it works with other cars but okay anyway let's just uh, start driving and uh, discharge the battery and, and start heating it up and I will explain as we go right we've been driving a little loop and we are getting close to Minnesota so I've been doing some yo-yoing to heat up the battery so we have the battery temperature that is similar to what we had uh, during 1000 km challenge okay well it's a little bit lower but whatever and i mean it doesn't matter too much uh, the the po whole point is that uh, we want to have hot battery when we plug in and then we we see what happens after that one and uh, yeah so um we are just four kilometers away from soko k minnesota now let's plug it in over there and uh, let the battery overheat <laughs> yeah we're doing this on purpose all right, we're charging now, so we should be getting 85 kilowatt until the battery overheats. And I want to, on purpose, make it overheat uh, more by firing up the car. Yeah, because this car is equipped with heat pump. And there's only, as far as, far as I understand, there's only one heat pump that can either heat up the cabin or cool down the battery, right? or maybe cool down the cabin and then alternate between cooling down the cabin and cooling down the battery. Uh, there is no separate AC for uh, cooling down the battery. So what we're gonna do now is we are forcing the car to use the heat pump for heating up the car. And then that should not leave any uh, cooling for the battery. I'm, I'm not sure, but we'll see. And here we get the message now that uh, the, the active cooling is running, but it should be running at the... Uh, uh, like a restricted uh, power since uh, the cabin is being prioritized. Just like an i3, like the MEB cars, like the Korean cars, they also rapid gate if you run AC or heating while charging. So we'll see about the temp battery temperature here. It sh should go up and then we should rapid gate soon. Yep, that didn't take too long. Now we have 46 degrees Celsius in the battery and we're rapid gating. But under normal conditions now, if we didn't run uh, the heater, uh, the car would be able to cool down the battery and then uh, usually after around three to five minutes this the battery temperature will drop and then we get 80 kilowatt again so uh, but this time that should not happen we'll see 
Rod's been several minutes now and we're still at 46 degrees. The reason why it doesn't go up is because we're charging quite slow. So yeah, let's uh, stop the car. And then we see what happens. Okay, I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, the cooling is active now. And one indication is that uh, we are pulling, uh, we, we have 45 kilowatt going into the battery. And if you look at the charger, the charger reports that it's pulling 46 kilowatt. Or maybe we are pulling 46. So there is one kilowatt of, of cooling. This is the, the design flaw of uh, the BYD. Uh, maybe not only up to three, maybe also the other BYD is that the cooling starts at the lowest rate in the beginning. And then it needs several minutes to step up to the next higher, slightly higher rate, maybe 1.5 kilowatt. And then eventually it will be at the maximum speed uh, at four kilowatt roughly. But that usually takes around 10, 15 minutes, but it, it is right now that we need four kilowatt heat uh, cooling, not one kilowatt. You see, we are still at 47 degrees. <laughs> so maybe I'll go to the rest, I'll go to the toilet and then I'll be back. Okay, before I leave the car, you see here, we are now pulling 47 kilowatt from the charger and we are taking 44.6. So right now we are cooling at uh, around two point, uh, yeah, I'm sure two, two and a half kilowatt. So you can also hear that it starts ramping up, but it takes several minutes, maybe, I don't know, I didn't time it, two, two to five minutes before it ramps up and now it's going to ramp up even more. So. Yeah, and now finally we see a little bit of cooling going on here. All right, we're back. And this is also a behavior I noticed, which is that it is quite hot in the car now. It seems that the car dumped some of the heat into the cabin. I noticed this also during the 1000 kilometer challenge. Let me show you something else. So now we're pulling 44 kilowatts from the charger. Um, but we are only taking 39.6. So you see, we are now cooling at the maximum rate, which is 4.4 kilowatt roughly, or I don't know, let's say four kilowatt. But it took a while. And then yeah, here, you also see now we are finally at 44 uh, degrees Celsius and we should get uh, 85 kilowatt again. Yeah, soon. All right, we charge to 50% and uh, the battery is uh, fairly hot, 43 degrees Celsius. And uh, during 1000 km challenge, I would get moisture problems. So I would run the defroster, which seems to pull a lot of power and generate heat towards the windscreen. So we'll see. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just run this one. I'll replicate the same scenario. Uh, and then we should start, start driving now. We need to discharge the battery. Okay, you see, just like uh, during 1000 km challenge, we get moisture problem. And uh, during the challenge, it wasn't even wet on the road. And also you can see here that the recirculation is not on. So for some reason, uh, we get lots of moisture here. Um, I'm not sure why, but um, I'm guessing that the heat pump is just running on the heat only mode right now. Uh, 20, yeah, it, it looks weird, right? But 27 is actually not that hot in here. It feels more like 21 degrees in other uh, cars or European cars. But um, my guess is that the heat pump is now heating up only and it doesn't dehumidify uh, the air by running AC. I'll, uh, I'm not sure how other cars does it. There's, there's a lot of moisture. This is actually not that bad. Maybe because I ran the HVAC while we were stationary, while we were charging. So yeah, I'll just fire up this one now, dehumidifier. Oh yeah, instantly the front windscreen uh, becomes much clearer. You can see it now. The side here takes a while before it clears out. Okay, we've been driving for a while now and uh, it seems like, uh, you see here, temperature has stabilized at 39 degrees Celsius. Initially it dropped quite quickly from 43 to 39 and it, uh, it seems like we have hit equilibrium where uh, the discharging, uh, which is here, is uh, ha so high that uh, the temperature doesn't uh, drop anymore. But I suspect that right now we just get some, I don't know, some kind of passive cooling or only fans cooling on the battery. And that's why we don't see lower temperature than uh, 30 to 39. And also, another thing is that we have whooping 10 degrees Celsius delta between uh, min temp and max temp in the battery. So that's uh, not good. It should be 
uh, as low as possible, ideally just zero degrees or one degree Celsius. So some of the best cars I've seen is Tesla, where most of the time it's hovering around uh, one degrees, and then sometimes it goes as high as three degrees, I, I four degrees Celsius Delta, yeah, I've seen. All right, we're back at Minnesota charging. So we arrived at 15%, not too interesting, I mean, not too important. What is important is that we arrive with 29 to 39 degrees Celsius. So yeah, we get 83 kilowatt now, but this time I will, well, just for, for the sake of it, I will not run the car, uh, we will let it cool down. And also this is always what happens, is that for the first minute, it will not run the cooling yet. It is as if it has some sequence, some, like it pulls every minute or some shit like that uh, to figure out that, oh, the battery temperature is so high that we should kick in the, there, there, there. <laughs> and then this happens, yeah. So uh, in the case, if the battery would be 45 degrees Celsius, it will then start charging, uh, or let's say 44 degrees, right? It will still start charging at 84 kilowatt before the cooling starts. And like every time now, once the cooling starts, it starts with the slowest or the, the, the weakest um, setting, which is roughly around one kilowatt, uh, rather than cranking it up to four kilowatt, uh, because that's what you need. Otherwise it's gonna overheat soon. Yep, there it overheated, even with, uh, with everything off here. Yeah, and now it's starting to throttle. I can see it here. Yeah, it will throttle and then uh, cool down and then go up again. Okay, I charge with 50%, just like last time. The battery is at 44, more or less like last time. And this time, when I start the car, I will not run it at 27 degrees. I will lower it to maybe 18, almost lowest one. And then we see. And you see, this time we don't get any moisture problem, simply because uh, the air conditioning is cooling down the cabin and also getting rid of the moisture. So, uh, but then how does it affect the battery temperature? Well, it's too early to say yet. We're getting close to yes him and wow, look at this, huh? On the previous run, it was 39 degrees. It didn't go below 39. Now we have 36 degrees already. We are not even halfway in the loop yet. Hmm. Okay, let's just finish the loop. We will drive the exact same route and we'll go to cleavage and turn around. And then we'll see how much colder the battery is on this run. You see, power is still the same, speed is the same, everything is the same, oh, except, some, except for some left lane huggers. Oh, shit. We are back at the charger and interesting, this time we arrive with uh, same uh, low temp, but a lot lower uh, high temp. It was 39 in the previous one. It was actually hovering at 34 for the longest time and then around 20% or 19%, then it went up to 35. Well, okay, let's plug it in then. All right, now we're charging. So let's see how long we can keep this high speed until it overheats this time. Oh, it throttled at 46 uh, degrees, but last time it throttled at 44%. This time it throttled at 52%. Oh, that's a lot better, man. Hmm, I wonder if I had to redo 1000 km challenge. Okay, we are back in Oslo, charging again. And let me just show you that every time now, if we just run the AC a little bit, then the battery becomes nice and cool. Uh, and then we get 85 kilowatt. The only problem is that this car has been pre-programmed to trigger the um, the active cooling at 39%. So as long as the battery is cooling at 39%, then uh, we have no active cooling. So that's actually a small disadvantage. You might be wondering, yeah, maybe it's doing this on purpose because, uh, well, actually it is doing it on purpose, but maybe it has a, a good purpose, which is that you want to heat up the battery so it doesn't cold gain, right? Well, um, no, because I've tested this battery and um, even when it was 20 degrees here and 20, I think it was 20 to 25 only, I still received the maximum speed. So this battery can actually charge really fast at uh, cold batteries. So yeah, I, if <laughs> I would have reprogrammed this uh, software, I would activate the cooling already now.
or maybe even earlier. As soon as we plug in, I will activate cooling. Oh, active cooling. 39 degrees. Every time, what the heck, charging stopped. Um, okay, charging error. This also happens very often with Auto 3. It's not uh, a, a charger problem. I, I think this is the 10th time I experienced this. So there must be something wrong with the car really, not the charger. Because when I test other cars, they don't fail this often. Like They might fail handshake, but they don't charge for 5 minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, quite random, until they randomly stops like this. Well, well, well. But the question is, will I redo 1000 km challenge? Well, the problem is that I'm running out of time. I have to return this car in one day and I have to run some errands tomorrow. So, uh, and it's a weekday tomorrow, so there will be Stau and shit and left lane hugger. So, um, I, I, I think I can't do it and I don't feel like doing it. But okay, so uh, the, the BYD Auto 3 did it in 12 hours and 15 minutes. I'm guessing maybe we can improve it by, let's say, 15 minutes. So maybe it could be a 12 minute run, uh, sorry, a 12 hour run. But I don't think it will be an 11 hour run because because of the problems that I explained to you that the software is quite silly. It doesn't cool when it should. It doesn't ramp up when it should. It's doing some weird shit. Uh, and then also randomly disconnects. And then, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it, but every time the charging stops or if you uh, just happen to fire up the car and you fire up the HVAC, uh, the cooling will then stop and then you restart again at the lowest rate and then it needs another 10-15 minutes to build up so uh, yeah I, I could do it maybe as the best case but then how realistic is it right the challenge i mean the run i already did was more or less a realistic run yeah so but at least pro tip for you guys if you get one of these cars and you just want to get the best cooling i mean you don't have to run it like cool all the run uh, like I did to test it. You can probably just run the cooling for maybe around uh, 15, 20 minutes and then you can switch over to more normal heating in the cabin. That's what I actually did on the last run here and it seems to be fine and it actually did made a big difference in the starting temperature which can give you around, um, let me see how much is it? Yeah, you can charge uh, five to 10% extra before it starts overheating. So yeah. I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.